Let's have a look at Java fields. Fields are variables inside the Java class. And that this class has such a field, it actually means that this field is a property of the class. So we can say that there is so, so called has a relationship between the field and the class. There are different types of fields. They can be numbers, they can be text, they can even be custom objects that you've made yourself. Let's have a look at an example in IntelliJ. Here we see the class car. A car has a color and a car has a number of doors, etc. These fields are properties of the class car. And the last one is a bit weird. It says engine, engine. A car has an engine. Sure, that's fine. But with number of doors, we can sort of imagine the number. And with string, a piece of text, we can imagine what that looked like. But what is an engine? What does that look like? Engine is a class that we have programmed ourselves. Let's have a look at it. It's a public class engine and for now, due to my lack of knowledge about cars and engines, it only has two properties. And these properties are just like car, the properties in car, they have a has a relationship with engine. And this could go down even further. So our car has an engine and engine is just another class that we created ourselves. So to summarize, we have this public class car and it has a bunch of properties, fields we call it. And they are of different types. Some of them are pieces of text. Other of those are primitive values, so to say. Int, double, these are primitives. Some of them are other classes we've created ourselves, like engine, as we can see on this slide. So what are Java primitives, you may wonder? Well, Java primitives hold raw values, so they contain nothing but the value, and this value is stored directly on the stack memory. You don't really need to know stack memory for now, don't worry too much about it. So an example of a raw value would be 2. And 2, you can actually store that in multiple primitives. You can store the number 2 in a byte, in a short, in an int, and in a long primitive. On this slide, you see a bunch of minimums and maximums. Generally, whenever we need a number, we go for int. If we need a bigger number, we go for long. This is how we usually do it. Also, what you may notice is that the minimum is usually one smaller than the maximum is big. This is because of the number zero. Java works with zeros and ones in the background, the binary system, and they represent the numbers that we are looking at, the decimal numbers. Well, since you can represent it with zeros and ones, that means there's always an even number of possibilities for the numbers that it could cover. Therefore, the maximum number is always one smaller than the minimum number because zero also needs to take a spot. And zero has been, um, well, considered more positive than negative. So therefore the maximum positive number is usually one smaller in absolute numbers than the minimum number. There are other primitives too. We have primitives for decimal numbers. We have the float and we have the double. Double is bigger than a float, so it can hold a more precise value. If you want to use a float, you have to end this with an F, as you can see on the slide as well. Then we also have a primitive for characters called char. This char is holding the character A on the slide. You can see this by the single quotation marks. You really need the single quotes in order to specify a character. All these characters it can hold, they're actually a number in the background as well. So I think A is 96 or 97. And what is good to know is that char, it doesn't have negative values. So it is unsigned, so to say. So the minimum is zero and the maximum is somewhere in the 65,000s. And then we have the last one. These are the booleans. And these are actually quite easy. They're either true or false, nothing else. Here you can see some examples of all the primitives. So what should be striking is that they all start with a lowercase letter. So they all have lowercase uh, letters in front. And there's a few things to point out here. And that is that the L is being postfixed at a long. So if you want to make a long and it's bigger than an integer, you actually have to put the L in the back because it default tries to make it an integer. And if it gets too big for an integer, you get a compile error. And for a float, you'll have to put the F in the back in order to tell Java this is a float, you can put this inside a float. 
Oh, I noticed now that I forgot to include the S in the print statement, but that's not too exciting. We would have just printed an additional 100. Um, there's one last thing I would like to tell you about these primitive values. It can happen that you actually want to change from the one type to the other. Well, in some cases, this is done automatically. So if you want to have a smaller type and you want to store that in a larger type, you can just do that. That's not a problem. But whenever you want to put a larger type into a smaller type, you have to be explicit because you'll have to make sure, or Java needs to make sure that you know that this is possible and that you know what you are doing. So here we see an example. Whenever you want to go from double to int, you'll have to do explicit casting since double can hold more precise values than integers. You have to say explicitly that this is what you'd like to do. Well, how do you do that? Um, in this first example on top, we see that you cannot just say int j is d because d is a double. But in the bottom sample, you can see that whenever you put int between brackets in front of the d, it's actually casting, changing the type of d to an int. And then it's fine. You can store the double in the int using this syntax.